call to order the meeting of the Common Council for Tuesday, October 4, 2022. Clerk. Thank you, Your Honor. We have 12, uh, 11 members who are um, voting in the meeting. We have uh, 10 members present in the chambers. One member is joining us via Zoom. And one is excused. And yes, thank you. One is excused. Very good. All right, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation offered by Alder Stoyer. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just one second, Alder. Yet. Candidates are hoping he comes to. Brace yourself. Oh, okay. There you are, Alder. Yes, thank the you. The Wall Street rally that began yesterday continued today. The Dow's. That's not my speech. That's not, <laughs> that, that's not it. Just want to let you know. The floor is yours. All right. Um, I found this poem that I wrote about 11 years ago, and I thought I'd read it today. It's called, We, are, we All Are Truly Special. Put the person before the disability. Focus on the individual rather than the functional limitation. Society has labeled and categorized each of us according to religious preference, race, financial situation, educational status, Mayor? employment title, ethnicity, disability, and a host of others. Society has struggled to think of the person before the disability. Call it ignorance, call it fear, call it laziness. God created us all in his image and likeness, and like the snowflake, no two of us are completely alike. God created us to witness to all segments of society, whether it be at church, at home, at work, at the store, or on the street. Take your why me, Lord, and what did I do wrong statements and roll them into a ball formed from a billion unique snowflakes and throw them at the sky. Smile and then share the unique, unique person that you are at church, at work, at the store, and on the street. God will be watching and loving us unconditionally. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. On to approval of the minutes. Motion to approve. Is there a second? second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Galvin to approve the minutes from our prior meeting. Any corrections there? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The minutes are approved. On to the agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Weary. Any changes here? Alder Morgan? I uh, have people here who are interested in speaking about item O. I was wondering if I could move that to the back of my behind Kate. Uh, o right after K? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so that motion was made by Alder Morgan. Um, seconded by Alder Scannell, motion to amend the agenda. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The agenda is amended. Motion to approve as amended. Mayor, point of inquiry. Alder Johnson. Uh, just Alder Morgan, I'm looking at the agenda. You said item O. Uh, did you mean O or did you mean P? I think O. Why does mine say P? That might be a, um, a prior one. That's a special one for you. That's October 4th. <laughs> might have been a prior. Yeah. 2022? It was amended. The agenda was amended. Oh. So that's probably why. Okay. Um, so we, we got do, the right item up. That's all I care about. Very good. Thanks for checking. Uh, so we do have an amendment that was um, adopted for the agenda. There's a motion by Alder Scandal. Uh, second for that. Second. Seconded by Alder Galvin. All in favor of approving the agenda as amended, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and the agenda has been approved as amended. Report by the mayor. Um, just a really quick note here. Mentioned our budget process a little bit last meeting. I um, just want to remind folks that we do have the joint finance and personnel meeting on November 3rd, and then uh, our final budget meeting of our full council on November 10th. So a note for our council and also for the public that uh, if you're interested in, in city business, this is really the most consequential piece of legislation that moves through our council and also has 
you know, major effects on, uh, on our tax rate. So please stay tuned for both of those meetings. Um, we're also in the process of, of um, scheduling a little bit of a, a budget town hall. Um, so we will we'll be communicating with the public and with council on, on when that will be, but obviously that will occur before our, our joint um, finance and personnel meeting. Um, so with that, we'll move along to announcements from our council. Any announcements? Oh, before we move ahead, I, I also want to recognize Alder Stevens uh, for bringing in some cupcakes for council and attendees uh, in recognition of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. He also sent out an email to all of us to remind us to wear pink. Uh, wanted to be sure that the bridge lights were, were lit pink as well. So just want to recognize Alder Stevens, um, even though he's absent tonight, he is joining us via Zoom. Um, so thanks to him for uh, for the for the cupcakes and for uh, recognition of, of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, so with that, on to announcements. Seeing none. Okay, we'll move along to appointments. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Galvin, and that is on a new appointment to the Board of Review. Any comments? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. On to ordinance, a second reading for adoption. Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Galvin. Any discussion on this ordinance? Seeing none, we will use the board. You may vote. Morgan, are you still having difficulty? Okay. How would you like to vote? Yes. Oh, good. Thank you. It's not there. Okay. Yeah. So I think there's some lag time with your. We should look at that um, later. But if if it's a, a long lag, then just tell me how you'd like to vote. So. And I see you're in. Okay. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, Mayor. Oh. And those are adopted, or that is adopted unanimously. Um, on to the report of the Redevelopment Authority. Okay. Hold on a second. Wait. Hold, I'm so sorry. Hold on. I'm not sure. Just give me one moment because... Alder Galvin, can you ask Alder Stevens um, why he's not on Zoom? He's, he's, uh, he's on Zoom. He's watching. Oh, he is on Zoom. But he's oh, yes. Able to access, uh, Clark. Okay. 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 Experiencing some technical difficulties here, so give us a few moments.
right, we are on the report of the Redevelopment Authority. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stoyer. Items here to be handled separately? Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. And that was adopted. Um, we're now, because of that amendment, we're on to item O, which is the report of the Plan Commission. Motion to approve. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Galvin. Discussion here? Alder Morgan. I'd like to open up the floor if anyone would like to speak about it. Motion has Make been made. Motion. motion has been made to open the floor by Alder Morgan, seconded by Alder Galvin. All in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Uh, now the floor is open, so if you'd like to. All right, I've got a few written down here, so I'll go down the list, and then if I don't call your name, feel free to approach the podium and state your name and address. Um, so here I have. Uh, Dan Manglis and Kevin Pavanka. Um, so, yeah, please approach the podium and state your names and address. My name is Kevin Pavanka. I am representing Gandard at 919 Auto Plaza Drive, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, so, following up to last week's meeting, uh, there was a uh, really good discussion by a lot of us outside after um, kind of thinking of good ways as a community to come together to brainstorm on you know the best way to move forward that's going to be the kind of work out for everybody um, there was kind of three main things that we were talking about as a group was one if we donated to Conservancy to tie into the existing city of Green Bay land donating to the property owners that are along that fence line or creating like an easement where we were no longer able to build because there was that concern of how close would the building be and more or less, maybe not so much in our part, but if Gander were ever to sell it down the road, would somebody else at that point come in, tear it down, do anything different to shrink that buffer up that um, beyond like that 50 to 100 feet that we were originally thinking? So, um, unfortunately, due to some issues with some green space credits, with the trying to get everything approved through to, you know, say if we were to do a donation to either the city or the landowners in order to clean that up so that way the project would be able to move. Oops, sorry about that. but. Uh, be able to get the project to move forward uh, without a concern of how much green space would that affect donating that 15,000 square feet of land to um, and I, sh I should kind of clarify that as well too so the the foremost north property owners are kind of more in favor of the donation part where the southern three were fine with the easement at that point um, and I got to clean that up a little bit too so technically not easement we met with our attorney on it had them review everything they said the best way is not truly an easement but a restrictive covenant that we can enter into have all adjoining property owners sign off on that pretty much state nobody ourself or any future owners can build within that 50 foot range that we would double the the green space or the um, buffer requirement from 25 feet to 50 feet and that way if any sales were to go down the road to you know any other owners at that point they would be restricted by that 50 feet as well too and that is pretty much the only way to break that is have an agreement with all the property owners that's touching that line fence together so everybody would be signed together on that covenant so that would deed our property as you know a 50 foot no build easement within that that easternmost section of it so um i lost my train of thought where i was going with that uh but that yeah so we met with our lawyer that was kind of the cleanest way to you know protect us on the green space side of it so that way we won't have this land donated and then not be able to get the credit of that 15,000 square feet which was that foremost northern properties um, and then you know kind of try to keep everybody's best interest in mind of getting that easement locked in or the covenants locked in so nobody could build within 50 feet and we still would be able to have the green space credit of that 50 foot buffer so Sounds like a good solution. Question uh, from council for Mr. Pavanka, I'll destroy her. Thank you, Your Honor. Thanks for coming in, Mr. Pavanka. And I know that you've gone through with the neighbors and tried, you know, I think Andrew has really stepped up and tried to do whatever they could. There's a lot of developers that would never do that. So I just want to give you credit for doing that. Um, did you talk to the planning office at all or uh, community development? You know, Director Steck Schulte or David Buck about this because I've talked to them too about well, that's all fine and dandy, but we can't do this or we can't do that. Was there anything that you talked about with community development, even with the good intentions that you have, that 
we might not be able to do it anyway. It kind of sounds like with these restrictive covenants in place, we would be able to pretty much move ahead with the building um, at a, a 50 foot, you know, buffer instead of the 25 foot that would normally be be allowed. So it seems like this would be able to make everything go through. Okay. All right. Yeah, there are some more complications with the donation, right, rather I, than the covenant. And if any of you wanted to see, we do have copies of that covenant as well too. But it's more that or less whole, just states we got the that whole thing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Great. Any other questions for our guest? Old Johnson. Uh, just uh, just one. Um, you know, I thought from the beginning a, build, uh, a non buildable easement restrictive covenant would be the easiest solution to this entire dialogue. So I'm glad that that we got there. Um, assuming, and, and of course, nobody else has had the opportunity to speak yet. So I, I don't know if there's any differences of opinion on that. Um, you know, the, the the issue at hand that I see perhaps out there that may cause a little bit of consternation with some folks yet um, is that we are taking up a zoning request today. Uh, which means we can't put a contingency on it that says that must be executed. So I guess I'm looking at you as the representative Gandrude. Yeah. With your integrity and your character on the line, is there any reason in front of all these people today that <laughs> Gandrude would not execute that agreement? No, we pretty much, I'm a licensed notary, so we got the stamps here ready to go with that. If everyone wanted to sign off right now in front of you guys, we could do that right here. So. I mean, obviously not everybody, but the representatives that are here. Yeah, and I don't think that's necessary because I think yeah. based on what we heard from the last meeting, there's your organization has oftentimes made really strong good faith efforts to work with neighbors, and I haven't seen any indication up to this point. And of course, if there's any neighbors that disagree, feel free to speak up. But I haven't seen indication that that you wouldn't hold to your word. But I just wanted to give you the opportunity to say, yep, yeah, that is our word, and, and and we will hold to that. Right. So, all right. Thank you. Yep. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? All right, Eck. Uh, to be honest, it's not really a question. I just want to say I uh, commend you for working with the homeowners the way you did, and I, I just think it's really great that it that you um, were willing to do that. So yeah. thank you. I mean, it was kind of a there was a lot of hours on everybody's part. There was a couple of meetings getting together afterwards, and you know, a lot of time stuck in by you know both parties between us and the, the homeowners as well too. So great, thank you. Yep. Next we have. Eric Hunter. Can I defer? <laughs> sure. Uh, Brittany Renke. As you know, I come prepared with handouts. You don't forget to say your address. address. Say it first and then, yeah. well, just a reminder, yeah, you have to say your name yeah. and your address. Yeah, just state your name and address, and then we do allow for three minutes for public testimony. Okay, so I'm Brittany Renke. I'm at 2400 Ruft Court. Um, I have some handouts here, just as visuals. We'll hand them. Oh, thank you. There's two, two, so there's two photos. Each of them there. Um, so sure. I want to thank everybody that I've spoke to over the past two weeks. Um, there's more than I can even name with that. Sure. I especially want to thank Dan and Kevin for being um, as willing to work with us as they have been. Um, I guess. I'm gonna try to hold it together here, but my disappointment is with the city. I wasn't the emotional one last time, but I am this time. We came up with Dan and Kevin and myself and a couple other neighbors, at least seven options to move forward with this. And, you know, Dan had offered that 25 feet. And I understand there's laws and there's rules and there's regulations. When you look at those photos that are in front of you, you're looking at one of the backyards that, yes, they're not gonna be able to build within 50 feet of that, but where you see that red line is where a six to eight foot fence is gonna be erected. So this property purchased this home 30 years ago, knowing that there was an R1 residential strip there that nothing could be put on from a business owner's standpoint. Laws change, rules change, regulations change. Now the residents are gonna have to deal with that change and losing the beauty of their backyard that they've been used to for almost three decades. Um, I, I, I am still struggling with the city's stance on not being able to figure out some way to accommodate this. Um, when you look at the purpose of that green space, on a res C2 residential lot, part of it's for watershed. If you're donating that land to residential owners, 
it's not going to be built on. It's still going to be green space. It's still going to be perme permeable. And then the other piece, and, and not, on top of that, Dan is required to put in a, um, a retention pond. So that's going to add, add to that piece for the watershed. When you look at another piece for that 20% is it's aesthetically pleasing to the community. So by him donating that land, it's going to be exponentially more aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing to 75% of the land that is touching. Dan is his own neighbor on the south and on the west. East Town Mall is the neighbor on the north, and then you have four neighbors to the east. So when you look at the purpose of that 20% green space, allowing him to donate that land but maintain his impermeable space to do his business as a car lot who their marketplace is impermeable space so he can park cars to sell it everybody wins in that scenario and so I'm just really disappointed that that option cannot be brought to fruition and quite honestly we're thankful and grateful that Dan is willing to work with his attorneys and write up this this restrictive covenant but at this point, it feels like a consolation prize. Like, we've done everything on our part as neighbors, including Dan. Dan is our neighbor, and that is one blessing that has come out of this, is so many of us have come together as a community, as a neighborhood, and the city couldn't come together with us, and that's very disappointing. So on, on that point, I'll go to Director Stick-Schulte and maybe <clears throat> Director Grenier, just on any kind of stormwater questions. but. Um, Director Sexualty, if you just want to explain some of the complications here. Yeah, I think the the, the uh, short, I guess, short answer is essentially uh, the ordinance requires uh, individual properties, in this case, commercial property, to maintain a certain amount of open space uh, on its own, on its own merit. Uh, essentially, what is being proposed by donating that land away, those obligations and rights with those that land transfers to that other property. Um, relying on another property to meet individual property requirements is is not something that is allowed by our code uh, and certainly would not be recommended by staff uh, i certainly appreciate the position of of the neighbors in this case i'm doing it but essentially it, it's 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 impossible to transfer those rights and obligations to another property while that and still maintaining it by the other an individual owner so it's in point those rights and obligations go with the property owner and with the property so by transferring that those requirements essentially change and it, it may sound uh, maybe a little overly bureaucratic and overly protective but unfortunately that does again that's something that needs to apply to all properties and all all individual properties with their individual property rights in context of what the zoning code is right. okay thank you any questions for Ms. Ranke Alder Johnson and if it's okay mayor just because I would like to follow up with director Steck Schulte yeah. um, since we're on the topic so uh, obviously we're only talking about zoning here. site plan will come later uh, is it is it plausible that a variance request could be submitted uh, at, at a later date to to figure out kind of I mean right now because the issue is there's not enough land right to be able to provide the stormwater management requirement is that the issue the, the open oh, the open space requirement that they can meet their percentage oh, the open basically. space requirement okay. correct that is, is, is specifically as a zoning issue. The stormwater is a, is a benefit, obviously, being able to use the area for stormwater management, but it is primarily the zoning open space requirement for this, this classification. So is that a variance request that could be submitted at a later date when you're looking at site plan removal, site, or site plan approval? Uh, if something came in that didn't meet code, they, go, they always have the ability to request that. But again, it, it has to, essentially, you have to meet a, a very specific hardship test uh, mm -hmm. that in terms of this that can depending on what would be proposed in my opinion i wouldn't see any there's a, i think there's five or six key standards that would have to be met this is being a wide open space that essentially there would be nothing that would qualify them for for building into that space especially once this easement is in place and it is essentially a covenant uh, which was not which is actually an excellent uh, request that was done by actually by Gandridge's attorney in terms of making it its permanence is actually considerably more than an, an easement eventually would expire and have to be renewed but the covenant will actually make sure that that's in per perpetuity okay. can I can I speak to that sure, so we we spoke through what that would look like if it was deeded over because Dan and I spoke and he's like if we can get the go-ahead if we can get something in writing from the city we'll go ahead and do it um, when we got the answer 
that, that you just heard from Neil. I, I don't know if it was you or David that I spoke to that gave that. Um, it was that it would then be at the mercy of going back to the Board of Appeals. Dan has been to the Board of Appeals. We're not asking, or we're asking not to take somebody's word for something. We can't expect Dan to take somebody's word for something. So at this point, he was ready to have all of those parcels deeded over for tonight's meeting with that one little piece from the city saying, yep, this can go through. Um, with that not being there, he's not willing to take the word of the city saying that, hey, if it goes to the Board of Appeals because of X, Y, and Z and everybody working together, that will go ahead and at that point say, yep, it's okay because X, Y, and Z happen. It's kind of that process that we're all asking somebody to, to be on somebody else's word that in 2022 isn't. Well, and just, just to point on, on that, I guess the Board of Appeals is an independent yeah. body. They don't answer to council. Right. So yep. nobody can really make yep. those assurances. Yeah. And that's why it didn't come to that. And that's why that was no longer on the table to do that prior to coming to tonight. So we've, right. I mean, we've scoured through just about every option we could think of. Okay. So, uh, Mayor, if I may. Yeah. Um, uh, Brittany, just one question here. I'm looking at where these, these red lines are, and I yeah. just I want to make sure that I'm understanding this. You're saying that this is where Gandrud's fence will go? Mm -hmm. So does that mean the fences currently in this photo are not on their lot lines? Correct, yep. So, so the current fences are on Gandrud's property? Correct. Right now? So okay. when, that, when those homeowners purchased the land 29 years ago, um, Gandrud initially owned that, and then they sold it to Easttown, and then I think Garrett had it in between um, so they did, Gandrud initially came back and they, and they mowed that strip all the way from Bill Morgan's house all the way down to Eric Hunter's house. Um, about four years after that, it stopped being mowed and so the property owners started taking care of it. Um, so when you look at, you know, Bill Morgan would call every other week, whoever owned it at the time saying, hey, can you take care of this? His son has allergies and it affected him. So. He made sure that land was taken care of. Brandon Zipper, who is right next to Bill, he's, he's lived there for six years. He's been maintaining that. And then my parents for 29 years, they've been mowing and maintaining that. And when they put up their most recent, um, they put more parking lot and then their current warehouse, when they erected that is when my parents put that fence up to block out the, the light and the sound and everything else. And that was my parents' solution to that. Nothing has ever come of it. Nobody's ever said anything about it. They've continued to maintain it. So um, I, I thought it was a great idea when, um, when Dan mentioned, hey, yeah, let's, let's donate that parcel over. You, basically, you guys have been taking care of it for almost three decades as it is. What's the big deal if it's continued to be maintained the way it's been for all of these years? Yeah, and I, you know, obviously that's a tough situation, right? Just because it's yep. been that way a long time doesn't necessarily make it compliant. Agreed. Um, it, you know, but I wonder if there might be sort of an out of this room uh, solution that could be found. Yeah. Um, you know, we talked about the restrictive covenant, and I don't know the details that are contained uh, within it, but, you know, perhaps there, there could be an agreement that you guys have amongst yourselves yeah. uh, where, where there's, uh, you know, terms within that covenant that allows that fence to be. The problem that lies with that is liability because Dan owns that area. If anything happens to anybody on that, where that is, is about 19 feet. So if anything happens to anybody on that 19 feet, Dan's liable, not willing to be liable for that. So we've, I mean, we've already started <coughs> discussing that as we got the, the shutdown from the city for being able to mm -hmm. do any type of donation. Um, so, I, and that's where I would again, if it's yeah. if it's in the restrictive covenant, I'm not an attorney, yeah. right? But if it's if it's in the restrictive covenant, you sign a hold harmless agreement. Um, I just maybe the lawyers can find a way to make that work for everybody. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to suggest it. Yeah. I, it's not something that's going to unfortunately be able to be a contingency on any type right. of vote we take on zoning. Um, but if it's yeah. a solution that can be found, I always like to find you know a, a solution that makes everybody happy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just wanted to at least offer that up as a suggestion. So, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. And last, we have Eric Hunter. Uh, hi, my name is Eric Hunter, 2406 Heather Court. Um, I was here last week as well, and uh, I'm just going to echo every, everybody else's comments and thank uh, Gander and Dan and 
uh, for for all the work they put into this. Um, and uh, and I agree with with my neighbors that I, um, that you know it's an unfortunate situation. And we're trying to make the best of it. Um, and again, I'm at the other end, and I've been through this process, and uh, worked with Dan, and came up with an amicable solution. It's been worked out really, really well. So, um, so I, I hope I, I, I like the fact uh, or the the covenant, the idea of the covenant. It protects us, um, and I'm just hoping that it can either help my neighbors for sure, um, or if there is another solution, uh, that that can be found too. So I just wanted to say thanks for working with us and hopefully we can find something out for them. Great. Thank you, sir. Any questions? All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other testimony? Seeing none. Motion to close the floor made by Alder Stoyer, seconded by Alder Scannell. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. nay. The ayes have it. The floor is closed. So we do have uh, a motion and a second on approval of the report of the Planning Commission. Any other comments from Council? Alder Morgan? I will be abstaining for the vote. Okay. That will be noted. Any other comments? Alder Johnson? Yeah, I just wanted to thank, I mean, all the parties involved. Obviously, we, we had a challenging situation, and Alder Weary had suggested at the last meeting, hey, can we hold this for two weeks? And I think this, this shows a positive outcome that, that can happen when um, when we're kind of smart about it in, in, in by that time. And, of course, our ability, uh, which will be later in the agenda, to do the first and final reading of this. So that way, the, um, you know, Gandrew didn't lose any time, and, and the neighbors got hopefully most of, of what they wanted and understanding of course it's it's not everything uh, but maybe there's some some additional conversation that can have there uh, and I appreciate the tough spot cities in you know it, it's unfortunately we're, we're not in a position to be able to pick and choose which laws we want to enforce um, I mean that would be a very very dangerous precedent to set so I don't I don't envy the position I'm sure uh, I'm sure director Sex Schulte's department probably wanted to be able to just kind of provide those waivers but uh, but if we give our staff the ability uh, to choose when certain laws are enforced I, I you know that's a really tough spot um, and, and unfortunately there's no law that can be passed that's going to address every possible imaginable scenario and this one is certainly unique and um, so again I, I know staff has spent some time on this but more importantly uh, the parties involved it impacted thank you for for what you've done to hopefully get us to a good solution today Thanks, Alder. Alder Schreier. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, I, I echo Brian or Alder Johnson's remarks as well, and I've spoke about the cooperation between both both parties. And the city is in a tough spot. And I, like I said, we're looking at a rezoning tonight. So uh, what Alder Johnson had mentioned before, that there might be some possibilities with the site plan or other things afterwards, we can't really talk about that now. We, we can only talk about the rezoning that's in front of us. And uh, I think a lot of us, you know, f have felt the neighbors, you know, the angst that they have gone through. And, uh, you know, we, I think there is some care. We do care what's going on. But, again, we have to base our vote on what is there in front of us and what the rules and regs and obligations are that we have as a city. So my hope is that, depending on the vote here, that we will be able to look at this down the road and see if there could be something with Board of Appeals or... Uh, site plan or some other caveats that we can look at after after the fact. So those are my comments. Thanks, Thank Alder. <clears throat> Any other comments from Council? Alder Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm glad you know, that we had the two weeks to try and come to a resolution. And, and it sounds like you know we have a very good one. And sometimes pursuit of the you know you're that you know the pursuit of the excellence the enemy of the good you know we have a good resolution we couldn't quite get perfect or excellent but uh, I really thank the neighbors for really standing up for their neighborhood and for each other that's awesome that's Green Bay right there and I really furthermore thank Andrew for being another a, a good member of that neighborhood you, you guys what you did there really is an example of what we strive for so that we don't have to uh, be pitting each other against each other you really bent backwards to find resolutions and for different, you know, legal reasons, you know, not all of them were perfect, and I don't know if that was known on some of them. Um, I still think, as Alder Johnson mentioned, maybe there's some hold harmless potential in the covenant you can explore with that fencing and that land. I think that's there, but you know, as far as what's before us tonight with the rezoning, I think 
you've brought the ball as far as you can, and it's, and it's up to us now to push it over the end zone. Uh, I really I want to thank you and compliment you on what you did, and uh, I trust I trust you're going to have a good outcome here. So, thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any other comments? Alder Scannell. Yeah, I'd just like to add that I, I I didn't quite understand that first talking to the before the meeting with some of the people. I get a much better, clearer picture now of what we're, where we're at, and I think it would really be. I see a problem with giving it over to the all these individual property owners because they may end up moving someone else coming in. They might want to put in a pool. They might want to put in uh, other uh, a shed or something and end up building on that land that's needed to be used for uh, wetland or open space open space purposes. So uh, I, I think the law makes sense. We we need to follow that law. And uh, but hopefully with a whole uh, hold harmless agreement, maybe something could be worked out later on with the covenant. So um, just it, it makes sense. I understand staff's position, and, and it makes sense. It just you can't deed that over to the other properties and expect things to 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 keep that open space. It's just too complicated. So thank you. Okay. Thanks, Alder. Anything final? Seeing none, all in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Aye. The ayes have it. And that report is approved. <clears throat> Improvement in services? Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Galvin. Items here to be handled separately? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, and the report has been approved. Okay. System's lagging a little bit. On to protection and policy. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Elder Scannell. Let's go, people. <laughs> Seconded by Elder Galvin. Any items here to be handled separately? Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. That report has been approved. Protection and policy granting operator licenses. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Weary. Any items to be, or any names to be held separately or abstentions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. We have already adopted or approved the report of the plan commission, so we're on to the report of the finance committee. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Weary. Items here to be handled separately. Hearing not. Uh, Alder Stoyer. Number, number five. I just had a question. Number five. Number five will be handled separately. Hearing none others. All in favor of approving the remainder of that report. Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That report has been approved with the exception of item five. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Galvin. That was pulled by Alder Stoyer. You have the floor. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I just wanted to ask, uh, Chief, um, are we, at, as far as canine dogs and handlers, are we at a, a good spot right now, or are we looking for more right now, or are we in a good position, or what? Uh, so we're budgeted for five. We currently have two vacancies. We're in the process, the very beginning process of training dog number four, and this would be to purchase dog number five using donated funds from the, the canine donation. Um, going forward, uh, that's all we're budgeted for. So, uh, you know, there have been discussions about would what would the right size of the canine unit look like, but we're just not in a, a position so budget-wise for more than that. But this will bring us to full okay. strength. All right, thank you. That's all. Thanks, Andy. So that, we have a motion to approve in a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. That item has been approved. Park Committee. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Eck. Any yeah. items to be handled separately? Item one. <clears throat> Any others? Bring none others. All in favor of the remainder of that report, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. Name? The ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item one. Motion to approve. Motion Second. to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stoyer. That item was pulled by Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, 
I think that um, I think we've got some folks here that might want to speak on this. Uh, Polly or Pierre? Uh, so I'd make a motion to open the floor. Second. Motion has been made to open the floor. That was made by Alder Galvin, seconded by Alder Scannell. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The floor is open. Were you here for the liquor license? It's approved. If anyone would like to speak to the peer, just approach the podium and state your name and address. Um, you have to get that from the clerk's office during regular business hours. But it, but it is approved. Hello, my name is Melissa Schmitz. I live at 815 South Adams Street in Green Bay. And I'm in the, the neighborhood that is um, near the Poiler Pier. So I'm here today to, um, for a couple of things. One, I, I've read the engineering report. I went to the Parks Committee meeting and heard the discussion and, and participated in that as well. Um, one thing that I would like to express to the council as a whole is that this pier is such a community asset, not just for the neighborhood, um, but for many, many people, um, all walks of life, many different cultures use this pier. And I think um, prematurely removing it would be, it might be a rush. I think there should be other alternatives explored for either reinforcing the existing structure, which there is a conceptual plan included with the, the most recent engineering study. Um, and just, you know, firsthand observations with, with where I live is that since the barricades and signage has been put up, people are respecting that. I have not seen a single person on the bridge. So from a safety perspective, I feel that the, the barricade is doing, is doing its job. Um, and I also conferred with another neighbor of mine um, on the corner of Poirier and uh, Jefferson, who also happens to be the executive director for the National Railroad Museum. And you know she did a little bit of background research on that as well. It's the second oldest railroad structure in the area. It was built in 1878. And so there may be reason to try to preserve some of that, <coughs> that heritage within our city. Um, but most importantly, I think there needs to be a more comprehensive look at a cost-benefit analysis between complete tear out and rebuild and <coughs> trying to you know, maybe preserve some of the structure, utilizing some of the, the, the timbers that are not, um, that are still in good to fair condition. Um, so, you know, from a sustainability aspect, I think, you know, that should also be considered. Um, and then, but to prematurely take it out and then not have a plan for what we need to do next, um, I, I just think that would be a mistake. So. Thanks for your testimony. Any questions? <coughs> All right. Thank you. Any others for this item? Motion to close the floor. Second. Motion to close the floor made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Scannell. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Aye. The floor is closed. Um, Alder Johnson. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, so this, this uh, Poirier Pier is located uh, now in my district, formerly was in Alder Galvin's district, I believe, uh, before redistricting occurred. So he's very familiar with this site as well. Um, you know, I think the complete irony uh, around this, recognizing that it's the second oldest uh, bridge of its kind in this area, is that we have uh, a landmarks commission uh, that has ordinances that dictate property owners need to take certain steps uh, to make modifications to their property and that they have to come get approval from landmarks commission to do it uh, and then here we are swiftly making a decision uh, to remove a very historic piece uh, of, of city property uh, that is heavily used by the public and doing it in a way that is very hasty and really kind of not giving our neighborhood the opportunity to either uh, voice their support or opposition, uh, or for even to have us look at uh, alternative options. And so uh, I do think that there are some additional evaluations that we can do on this. I don't think we need to be hasty uh, to remove it because once it's gone, it's gone. You don't get it back. And we talk about that with old buildings all the time. When they're gone, they're gone. And then, and then now you see generations that look back and say, man, I wish we had that back. And, and so uh, I'm going to make a motion to refer this back to staff. 
Um, there's a couple of things that I would like staff to do if, if council uh, sees it fit to support that motion, I think. Uh, part of it is I would like to see the engineering study that was done last time, which I believe was in 2005. Um, uh, I'd like to see uh, some, some analysis done on, um, on the service of this being used as a pedestrian bridge versus obviously what was originally intended, which is a train bridge. Uh, and then really, you know, sometimes you can get these reports and they say, hey, this is a recommendation. You can do this, that, or the other thing. Uh, but when you go to an engineering company and say, hey, this is what we'd like to know, uh, the, the, the report can look a little different. And so uh, I would like uh, for staff to explore what it would take uh, for us to actually salvage uh, salvage uh, the pier. So uh, so again, my motion, refer to staff with the, with those uh, contingencies. Alder Johnson makes a motion to refer this item to staff. Those seconded by Alder Galvin. Comments on that motion? Alder Eck? Um, so I, I, actually what I'd like to do is um, ask Director Ditchite to share, because we did ask about costs in in fixing it up to, to be safe. Um, so I just wanted to ask him that. Sounds good. Director Ditchay. Yeah, so when you refer to the engineering report that was submitted in the agenda packet, uh, you'll see there on page uh, five <coughs> that it, it says in there that over 50% of the structural piers uh, which are the main structural supports uh, are have to be replaced or removed and so I just want to point that out uh, or reinforced or re well it says half of them have failed and so yes you would have to do some reinforcement uh, what this plan actually recommends is in essence build piers right next to the piers that are there right now so yes there would be an option per this report to leave what's there and in essence build a new pier around it is what they're recommending. The question is as a city is that what we would want if we're trying to uh, salvage the pier that's there. So I think we could do additional analysis on it to see um, what options are out there for reconstruction but based on what I'm reading in, and interpreting in this report uh, I think it would be difficult to salvage what's there if we want to maintain a pedestrian bridge. And in essence, um, we probably have to rebuild it uh, based on this report and how I'm interpreting it. So, uh, but I'm definitely willing to do more research into it. Um, I, I don't object to the motion that you have in front of us. You know, my only concern would be uh, the additional potential liability, uh, although, um, um, there aren't any reports of people hopping over the barricade. If they do, the city is definitely um, maybe uh, up for some additional risk uh, associated with that if somebody does jump over the barricade because uh, that decking and the railing is in extremely poor condition and, and I would not allow anyone, any pedestrians on that bridge right now uh, with, the condition, with the condition of the decking. So that's really my only concern, is leaving it there for an extended period of time and the potential for people climbing over the barricades. All right, thanks, Director. Any other comments or questions? Um, well, I also, if it's okay, I wanted to ask uh, Director Grenier to give his um, input on it, which I did talk to him after the meeting last time, last uh, Wednesday. Okay, Director Grenier, do you have anything? Although the bridge may have been originally designed for rail traffic, the consulting engineers who are who completed the report that's included in the agenda packet, and we, my engineering staff also did a uh, review of that report and provided our recommendations to, uh, to Director Ditchite before this went to parks. <clears throat> what the engineer has indicated is not that it's in danger of collapse due to pedestrian traffic, but it is in danger of structural failure due to extreme weather conditions, so a bad storm, or ice shoving on the river. Um, that you can't just go in with four by four posts and reinforce it. You're going to have to replace in kind because that structure is going to have to carry the dead load of the original timbers if you intend to hold that uh, with the historic character. Uh, you're going to have to, any modifications are going to have to be to the original spec. So 
the damaged piers are going to have to be replaced with piers in kind, the pilings. Um, so what Director Ditchite has given you is, is a pretty accurate snapshot uh, of the condition. Given the severe nature of the deterioration that we see in the photographs and review of the engineering report, uh, it is our opinion in Public Works Engineering Division <coughs> that the structure does need to come down uh, because of the risk associated with it. The liability to the city by having an attractive nuisance uh, present on the on the bank uh, is pretty significant, and, and we would we would have those, especially seeing as we're discussing it right now in open session. Um, there is no liability waiver or immunity for a a situation that you are unaware of. So we stand in support of the recommendation that consultants put out. Thanks, director. Anything further? On? Okay. Yeah. And um, and. I, we did actually also commit to go and look at it ourselves, so we're, we are going to do that. Um, I, I don't think putting off till our next um, uh, meeting is a bad idea, but I just wanted to make sure everybody understood <coughs> where we were coming from when we made our decision. Okay, thanks Alder. Alder Galvin and then Alder Scannell. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I had the pleasure of crossing that bridge when I was a young lad with a couple of my cohorts. <laughs> Parents weren't happy when they found out later on that night, but uh, it was an experience. Um, that, that has been an asset, not only to the, the, the district, um, my former area of district, uh, Astor Neighborhood Association, but the community. There's artwork that's been in place down there for many years. Um, it attracts a lot, a lot of people. There isn't a time I don't drive by. Uh, where I don't see someone or used to see someone out on it fishing or with their children, families, uh, people taking pictures for graduation or weddings. Um, I would ask uh, Director Deschite, were there any plans to replace this bridge or this uh, pier? Director? At this point, uh, <coughs> we don't have any funding in place to do any new structures out there. Uh, we do have existing funding in place if, if the desire is to, to remove what's there. So what I presented at Parks Committee is due to the structural and safety concerns that we have on that amenity, I, I propose to remove it as quickly as we could. Uh, and then we can have the discussions in the future, what, if anything, do we want to install in the future? So we don't have funding, so we would have to look at grant opportunities. There'd probably have to be likely a bond request as a matching funding source to that. Uh, one thing I presented at the Parks Committee is that although we don't have an engineer's estimate for a new structure because we don't know what we're proposing to build yet, uh, we did uh, somewhat do a cost comparison to the recent pier that we bid out for Bay Beach Amusement Park. Uh, that pier came in at $3.4 million uh, when we put it out to bid recently. Uh, we did not award the bid because we didn't have enough money. But when you're looking at a comparison of length uh, of that pier versus this pier, we would estimate it to come in approximately $1.5 million to build something new. That's the same comparison to the Bay Beach structure with you know, the, the materials. Now obviously if we go with different materials, the cost could come in, in a little bit less, but I would anticipate that anything we build out there of any substance and length would be at least a million dollars. All to go. Uh, Director, I'm confused. Mm -hmm. We're looking, you're, 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 and you're just roughly basing this on a, a pier in the bay that's 400 feet long? Correct. How, how long is this pier? 140 feet. And you're thinking that it's gonna cost roughly a third of what that would be? Is, is that what you came out with, 1.2 1, 1. out of? Roughly. I mean, there's mobilization costs, which, you know, for the same projects okay. would, would incur for both projects. So, again, it's, it's hard to do a apples to apples sure. cost because this is a wood structure that was a steel and concrete structure. Um, but I would, with today's construction costs, wood is not very cheap right now. And I would find it. Again, I'm jumping to some conclusions here because we don't quite yet know what we would build, but I would think it'd be a very safe assumption that whatever we built, if we want something of this magnitude, would be at least a million dollars. All right. So that long answer is no, 
you weren't planning on replacing it or yes, you were planning on replacing it? We had no intentions of replacing it because okay. we didn't know it needed, it was in uh, this bad of a condition structurally. Okay, That Thank was you. not known until this report was done recently. All right, and I would ask the city attorney, liability-wise, if the city puts up barricades, notifications, are they covered? And someone crosses those barricades, trespasses onto that, and is injured? I can't say 100% that we can take whatever steps we, we feel are reasonable with respect to mitigating risk, but if we know that there's a structurally deficient um, facility, um, there's always a risk that we could be held liable. I don't think we can um, mitigate that away into a zero risk situation. Have there been any injuries on it? Not that I'm aware of, no. And yet we have sidewalks all over the city which injure citizens almost on a weekly basis. And as soon as we're aware of it, we put a marking on the sidewalk. Sometimes we throw a little asphalt on that, but we don't think that's, you know, I mean, what's the liability there then? Well, liability assessment with respect to sidewalk defects is a little different because we have um, statutory immunity for roadway and sidewalk defects um, under state statutes. So that's a, a different analysis, I think, from a liability and perspective. And this isn't considered a walkway or sidewalk? Uh, I would have to look into the details a little bit more as to the definition of what a sidewalk is under um, under statutes and whether this would qualify. So I, I wouldn't be prepared to answer that right now. All right, thank you. I guess my concern is, is once it's gone, it's gone, like uh, Alder Johnson said. And I don't see any push from the Park Department on having it replaced, and yet I would be uh, surprised if the Astor Neighborhood Association is aware of this. And if it's gone, and then they decide after the fact, they find out that they want to do something about this, then it's far too late. And I, I don't have a problem um, letting this sit for a while and try and get some more public input on this to see uh, what the citizens want. I mean, this is who we represent. And I think they're very much unaware of what the city is planning on doing at this point. And I think if they're made aware, and are able to respond, then we might get some direction from them. So I, I'm in favor of just holding this until that can happen. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Scannell and then Alder Hutchison. Well, I certainly don't want to railroad the pier into oblivion. Uh, but it seems to me that uh, the biggest concern is from Mother Nature doing the work for us. Um, I'm wondering if, when we're talking about taking this down, we talk, can we just disassemble this? Can we, or does it have to be demolished? Director Uh It'd be difficult to just disassemble it um, in pieces, but you probably could. It would just cost more, more money to do that. I, I would maybe recommend that we hold this and look into that. Because I don't think saving it is really a viable option. It sounds like that would be really expensive. I mean, looking at the report, it's in, it's in rough shape. It's in bad shape. There's a reason why we tear down old buildings sometimes, sad as that is. Um, but if we could disassemble it, I mean, the, the value is in its, its history, right? It doesn't necessarily be in that uh, historical spot. We could perhaps reassemble it elsewhere where it can be reinforced and uh, the main concern seems to be from wear and tear from Mother Nature, not human wear and tear. So that perhaps if we can disassemble this and reassemble it someplace else, we might be able to save some history. And uh, uh, I'm afraid leaving it, we might lose the history to Mother Nature. You know, we're going to, the object's going to be taken out of our hands. Um, the, 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 the spot, the, its environment will do it in. So um, I'm, for, I'm for holding it, but I would like to see a direction of, of what it would take to disassemble it instead of trying to save it, because I, I think that's going to be a lot more expensive and a lot more, well, may perhaps do both. I suppose look into both. Get it all. Get it all, yeah, yeah. But I, um, I really hope we can save it somehow or another, but it seems to me disassembly might be more viable. So. 
Director Detroit, I think, has some comments. Oh, okay. Yeah, just for clarification, um, I didn't quite understand what you meant by disassembling until you were speaking just now. Um, when you read over the structural report, uh, it, it clearly says in there that most of the wood that's in the structure is, is really um, not quality wood and should be removed. And so I would recommend um, not disassembling it for the purpose of reassembling it later. I thought you were just referring to disassembling portions of it just to keep the piers in place and maybe get rid of the new stuff that we built 15, 20 years ago. So I misunderstood the question. Well, if, I, I think as a pier, it certainly isn't going to be able to maintain its function but if we disassemble it and reinforce some of that wood and everything and set it up somewhere where it's not going to be uh, out in the water, say, you know, we could put it as part of a trail or something or, or uh, I don't know. It, it, I think, and perhaps some of it is too rotted to be saved. But I, I think if we could look at what's salvageable from it, and see what could be done from that. Thank you. Alder Hutchison. Um, thank you. Um, I'm glad that this report was written uh, because we have this structure and we got to do something with it. I was struck by two things in this uh, report. One, they did a lot of work on this, re on this structure. If you look at all the dots and everything that they looked at, they looked at a lot of things. And I kept thinking, this is a footbridge. Okay, there's a lot of material there. And one thing that was confusing, and um, Director Grenier helped me on this, it's not clear when they make a judgment call on these structural pieces, what are they referring to? Are they referring to the foot traffic or are they referring to the ice flows or whatever? I think these engineers owe us a little bit of an explanation of what their view is on foot traffic pressure on these structural members and then as compared to the river uh, forces on these piers because they're two totally different things and if it's mainly just the river flow and weather well you can deal with that differently than with the structure itself if it's foot traffic and both equally well then that's different so I think we need uh, I don't think we have enough information from this report because they kind of didn't really differentiate. They just said poor, good, fair, but from what perspective? Um, so I'm in favor of holding it, uh, and I'm only asking for like a paragraph or whatever uh, of additional to this report that makes that clearer. Uh, because it does mean something in regards to where you go with this structure. If it's both, then we're kind of in one area. If it's just strictly from the uh, environmental river uh, ice flows, well, that's interesting because you can build a mini structure around it to protect it. You know what I'm saying? So I think we need clarification uh, on this from my perspective. And I'm in favor of holding off on, on this also. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Alder. Any response to that, Director Grenier? <clears throat> uh, not particularly. Um, I had a brief conversation uh, with Alder Hutchison before the meeting. Um, the criteria that they are using is to determine fair, poor, or good condition uh, is more in relationship to weathering and what we refer to as section loss, how much of the original wooden member has been removed or is, is uh, structurally deficient. Um, so those were made primarily with uh, visual observations then backed up with some cores where they dr physically drilled a hole into the wood to gain samples uh, on the interior. And I don't think their determination as to good, fair, or poor is going to change. Um, to, to go back to the consultant and get clarification as to what the concern is, I think is, is fine. Um, 
my read of the report is that they are concerned with weather impact uh, and ice loading um, on the structure and that's going to happen regardless of whether that structure is, uh, if, if it's there, those forces are gonna act upon the structure, let me put it that way. Um, my concern, my sole concern, would be mitigation of, uh, of liability to the city by having an attractive nuisance there. Um, so if, if the council is willing to, uh, to take that risk, then there's no harm in, in the structure being there uh, for the foreseeable future. Question. So, um, yeah. Have there been any instances on that footbridge of pedestrians being hurt because of the structure being unsafe? At to this point, Director Detroit. Uh, there have been no reported incidents that I'm aware of. Okay. Okay. Thanks, uh, Alder Stoyer, and then Alder Galvin for a second time. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> well, being part of the. Park committee we were we talked about this for about 45 minutes we had a number of folks testify and people that know me know I love history so there's nothing on that particular matter but the fact is um, some of the citizens came up and talked and one of them said well there was fire there's fire damage and he was mentioning that the creosote well you know Peshtigo had a fire and a lot of the trees survived that maybe just the creosote so I think a lot of people have these ideas of what's good, what isn't good, and there's fire. there was fire damage, and they were talking about the water flow and the ice and all this other type of thing. The wood is 144 years old, and wood deteriorates in water. So, you know, I, I appreciate the, you know, the efforts that people are making to try to save this particular structure, but, you know, I, I'm all about referring it back. The reason we voted the way we did is because of the safety issues, pure and simple. And it's not, you know, we, we spoke from the head and not the heart, you know, and I, it's, it's a great asset. It would be great to keep that there. And Landmarks Commission, hopefully they could get involved in this as well. So maybe, maybe we could take a look at that a little bit further. But we had uh, testimony from Director Ditchite and Director Grenier on this. And I think the committee was listened to that very closely. So those are my points. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Galvin. Thank you, Your Honor. I just have uh, one more question I have from a constituent that's listening to this meeting. Um, was there a estimate on uh, the cost to repair what's there? Director? No, the consultant did not uh, provide an, estimate, an estimated cost. All right. Thank you very much. All right. A lot of good discussion. We have a motion to refer this item to staff. Alder Johnson for a second time. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Just one final comment. And, and I do want to thank the committee because I did watch uh, what the work you did and you asked a lot of great questions and, and, and obviously thank staff for, for doing the test. I just want to be clear that the one thing I don't want us to do is question what's in the engineering study. Uh, that's science, right? And, and, and there's a lot of integrity in what's in there. Um, the, the point of the referral was really for us to explore uh, alternative options and if I think the real question at play here today is whether or not to, we're comfortable assuming any possible liability look all around <coughs> us city has liability everywhere right someone could break into Bay Beach and cross a line and get hurt and they could sue us someone could trip on a sidewalk and sue us I mean this we have it everywhere so I think the likelihood of somebody walking past that and that just happened to be on the bridge at a time that a nice shove comes and knocks it over like it's just it's such a minuscule possibility that I think for us to be able to have the opportunity to preserve this asset but more importantly this access to the waterfront that is immediately off the Fox River Trail and sees a lot of usage so I think that there, there's it's a little bit more time for us to kind of explore some of those options so that we can preserve this asset for our community. And preserve doesn't necessarily mean holding it in place. So I'll just get to your point. Yeah, it might mean we have to rebuild. Uh, but we don't, we don't know until we kind of maybe ask a few more questions and dig a little deeper. Thanks, Elder. So we have a motion to refer this item to staff. There was a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. That item has been referred on to personnel committee. Or no, yeah. yes? Uh, yes, personnel committee. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, Second. seconded by Alder Galvin. Items here to be handled separately. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. On to item S, which is informational item.
Any comments here from council? Um, Alder Eck. But um, I, is it possible, we do have somebody that wanted to ask questions on the floor. Is that possible to open the floor for that? Uh, members of the public can make comments, yeah. Okay. Make the motion. Well, then I'd like to make a motion to open the floor, please. Second. Second. Motion to open the floor made by Alder Eck, seconded by Alder Johnson. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. If the ayes have it, the floor is open. Hi, Alder Eck, Captain Sarko, um, Green Bay. I am here um, on behalf of Sandy Juno, who is unable, she's at another event this evening and is unable to speak. Um, I know that she had... Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I'm here on behalf of Sandy Juno, who is on a, at another event, unable to, um, to be here to ask her questions. I know that um, she had attended the policy and protection meeting and had some questions um, at that time that weren't, because it was a report only, weren't able to be ans asked or answered. Um, so I'm hoping the alder men would allow us to um, have these questions asked and answered from the clerk, whether it be tonight or um, um, at a later time, I guess. So um, there was, um, I, like I said, a report at the policy and protection meeting on how the um, in-person absentee voting would uh, occur for the upcoming November election. And there was concerns um, that when we are, when um, observers are in the clerk's office, if they would uh, state the person who's there to vote um, loud enough that the observers can hear the name and address of the voter. Um, again, these, these, these questions were submitted to all the alders and, um, and uh, for direction, and I, I don't see that they were addressed in the report from uh, Ms. Jeffries. Um, and, um, you know, there's, there's a whole list. I don't know that I need to go through them, I guess. I don't know what the best way to, um, to have these answered. I mean, there was issues that we, she had observed um, during the August primary where um, people were assisting people improperly, not, um, they were more likely telling them how to vote instead of reading the ballot to them. Um, and, um, there was no request for people who had um, disabilities to be able, that there was a machine that they could use themselves if they so wanted to use it to make it acknowledged to them that it was available. Um, there's gonna be greeters at the November election. Um, how are they selected? Are they just people, uh, um, are they clerk staff? Are they members of the public? Do they have affiliations? As far as the clerk staff signing um, absentee ballot certificates as witnesses, it does say on the certificate they should be U.S. citizens with the clerk's office is not a U.S. citizen in itself. So the people signing should be signing as personal people with their home address um, would be a question. Um, and um, again, what training has been done to the city staff um, the clerk's office staff that are observing these people voting to the um, requirements for asking for assistance and aid in voting um, and what ha the observations of them voting. Um, obtaining the witness signature, um, securing and transporting the completed ballot to the clerk's office. How is that going to be, you know, what's the process of that? Um, how many chairs will there be allowed for observers in the office? and outside the office. Now one observer won't be able to see both, both the people signing in and being able to watch them vote because it's in two separate locations. They're gonna be part in the office and then part all out in the hallway. So one observer can observe um, theoretically both um, options. Um, and there are observers who have um, a need, who have disabilities themselves and what requirement, what, um, ability do that what's going to be offered to them to comply with ADA um, for themselves as observers um, and what chairs and other um, ability for hearing um, to be able to observe what's happening in the hallway um, as far as when we uh, when an observer wants to challenge a voter um, I know Miss Jeffries had set up the last time I was there and uh, Sandy had mentioned this that we can only speak to her at 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. Um, it's our understanding that a challenge can happen at any at the time at the voter. I mean, once it's it's done, there's nothing we can do. Um, and a lot of times we 
that you can't hear the name or the address or you're listening over here. So to have it resolved at that time before that person leaves would be seem to be the appropriate time to handle it versus two hours later to try to figure it out and address it. So, um, so again, she had submitted this list to all of you elders, and I guess um, she's looking, since this was a report uh, required, uh, requested by Jesse on how the November um, election partly was going to be handled, there's many a questions. And as citizens, we don't understand the way that we can get these questions answered because we're not given that information if we can't just call the clerk and they won't answer the questions. So how can we as citizens, you know, Sandy addressed this in a very nice um, email, hasn't been responded to. What can we do as citizens to feel comfortable moving forward and um, have questions answered that we have concerns about? So, Thanks, ma'am. Any questions for our guest? Seeing none. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public like to testify? <clears throat> Seeing none. Entertain a motion. Motion to close the floor. Second. Motion to close the floor made by Elder Scannell, second by Elder Johnson. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The floor is closed. Comments or questions from our council? Elder Burnett? Yeah. Um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I guess the question for Clerk Jeffries is uh, have you responded to Ms. Juno's questions? Because I, I, we were all copied and we all received them, and they seem like pretty straightforward questions. I'm just curious if you've responded or if you plan to respond. Thank you, Alderman Burnett. Um, Ms. Juno's questions were requests for information, not open records. There was only one request for an open record, which um, there is no record to respond to that. And so uh, her questions really were about our process. Um, and essentially, we follow state law chapters 5, 6, 7, and 12 specifically. So that's how our process is outlined. I mean, but did you tell her that, though? That is, uh, so the responses to open records requests or requests for information, which was the bulk of Ms. Juno's um, document, were sent to the law department. It's not, OK. I, I would appreciate, I, would, I can certainly speak for myself. Thank you. Did you have another question, Alder? Alder, 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 Alder no, I, cer I certainly do have questions because Again, I get what you're saying, that there could be a legal reason or perhaps you believe you set aside part of her request, but why wouldn't you just answer all of her questions line by line? It just seems like a, a rather simple, and I don't mean to sound this in an insulting way, but it just seems like a real simple response to very legitimate questions. I'm sorry, Your Honor, I believe Mr. Weary has a question, but I... I wanted to see you answer it. Alder like Weary. You've been here long enough. Alder Burnett has the floor. Yes, and I just want to see Just stop. No. Alder Burnett has the floor. I honestly understand that. I stood up so I could see the person being asked the question respond. And I don't know, obviously she had a problem with that. Well, there's been a little bit of crosstalk, which I think is what Clerk Jeffries is picking yeah, up on. I have to decipher some of her rambling. Very well. Alder Burnett has the floor. Uh, Your Honor, I'm so sorry. I don't appreciate the adjective rambling. So just, just to note that. Yeah. Um, so Ms. Juno's questions were requests for information. I will defer to the law department in terms of how we answer requests for information. And that would be from many entities, not just residents um, of the city of Green Bay, not just citizens of the United States, but any entity. And so um, I believe that there's been some consternation around uh, the clerk's office communicating with people regarding requests, those types of requests. Um, Ms. Juno does represent the local Republican Party, and uh, I, I do understand that she has some questions. As I said, many of those can be answered from state statute. There was one request for an open record, which does not exist. And so I will defer then to um, uh, City Attorney Bungert to give a more full explanation of the difference between a request for information and a request for a document. Attorney, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to do with that response. Attorney Bungert, if you sure. could address that. No, just to provide a little bit of context. So um, we have a process, particularly during election times, for because of the amount of work 
um, and responsibilities that the clerk's office has during election season, particularly during um, for an election of this size. Um, the law department handles all requests for information, all requests for records requests, because sometimes they can be nuanced. Sometimes within one request, it could be a partial records request, partial request for information. A records request obviously has certain statutory uh, requirements with respect to response and how that's approached and timelines and things of that nature. So it's easier for the law department to review that and decipher as to what needs to be processed as a records request and what is just simply a request for information, which is just answering questions. Um, to date, I believe my department has received 34 records requests from August through today just uh, related to election questions. So in addition to all the other things that we're working on, we're, you know, we're doing our best to process those requests, first come, first serve um, in time and in, in fairness to, to people who are submitting requests, not just from Ms. Juno, <coughs> but from other um, citizens, other organizations, so on and so forth, in addition to all of the other records requests that we're processing for regular city records. So it's within our department and we're preparing a response. We just haven't had the opportunity to provide that response in time for the council do you, meeting. Do you think that the response to the open records and Ms. Juno's kind of really basic questions, I get how they were kind of put together in an open records sure. question too, but Will, will all of the uh, requests be completed prior to Election Day? Uh, I, we're working on them diligently. I don't have a timeline. Um, again, I don't know the exact detail of all the other pending records requ requests we currently have on our docket, um, but we will respond as soon as is practicable and without delay. We do our very best in responding as soon as we can. Could you, uh, Attorney Bunger, um, provide the council with a list of all of the open records requests that have been, I, I was not aware of it and I, I, we don't manage staff, I know that. Sure. But could you prepare us, because it would just be nice for us to know, this is why we put this agenda item forward, was mm -hmm. that we could, <laughs> people could ask all the questions. That was really the intent of this item, sure. is that, okay, the public has questions, they can ask questions and get the answer prior to the election. If it's after the election, then I think we're all, we all have election fatigue, let's be real, but this just seems like kind of not necessary to go through this to very basic questions from Ms. Juno. Could you respond to that? I'm not sure what the question is, but as far as a response, I think generally we, we try to be as accommodating and as forthcoming with as much information as we can, but we only have the resources that we have and we only have so many hours in the day. Um, and particularly now, um, just in the season that we're in with budget preparation, um, preparing for board of review in a couple of weeks, preparing for the election, um, on top of the regular workload that we're handling with respect to ordinances and research and, and daily questions from staff and from alders, um, it, it's, it's a balance and, and we make every effort and, and um, do our very best in, in being as communicative with our citizenry and with other organizations that reach out to us and we try to provide the same access to everybody, everybody equally and equitably. Um, so we don't necessarily um, prioritize or make kind of distinctions like that. We, we just try and answer the questions we best the best we can and as quickly as we can. Okay, thank you for that. Sure. Uh, really, uh, the question, I guess, and maybe I didn't ask it as plainly as I could, but mm -hmm. just if you could provide the council a list of the open records requests we that can, are pending. We can do that. So we, we as a body can feel confident, confident and, and, and kind of convey that confidence to the, the public who's inquiring. Now, I will say, and, sure. and I'll... I'll kind of give up the floor. I just wanted to make one point. Now, uh, Clerk Jeffries did, for the sake of the public who may not be aware of this, Clerk Jeffries did uh, send out an email to council members for questions that we could ask to be submitted into the report. That was sent on Friday the 23rd. I'm not going to read the email. So, you know, there's some correspondence that I don't think necessarily needs to be conveyed, but um, I did list some questions and I did I did do it by the deadline she asked for Wednesday and I submitted by Tuesday and she did answer all of the questions but I did 
write this. I saw Sandy Juno emailed everyone a list of questions. You may be best advised to answer those in your report. Just a thought. So, so just so the public is aware that there was someone on council that did see Ms. Juno's questions and did send those to the clerk. Of course, I didn't demand that that won't necessarily be my place, I don't think, but the request was sent to Clerk Jeffrey. So hopefully we get a list of all those open records requests and we can get the information to the public um, for those who requested it. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any other comments or questions? Alder Weary? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, you know, those questions, I, I thought they'd be answered as well when, when it you know, was CC'd in on the appropriate staff. A lot of those are not, you know, how you should do it, but they're asking how are we doing it. And this is by a former expert, you know, a former clerk who is asking this question. So, you know, I've heard from citizens, as I'm sure a lot of you have, that, you know, staff on this issue is being minimally helpful, adversarial, even vindictive with silly charges being brought on citizens. I mean, that's nonsense, some of the stuff I'm hearing. That's ridiculous. Somebody raises their voice about something illegal being done and they're being charged with something? Come on now. That's small town stuff. So, you know, with the numerous snafus we've had in the past few years, we should be bending over backwards to answer any and all questions as quickly and transparently as possible. Election integrity and transparency, but number one, customer service. Man, if there's nothing to, you know, the greatest solve of this wound is going to be bending over backwards and just offering everything up and saying, here, if you have questions, here it is. When you don't do that, it, it, it causes more irritation and more questions. And so, gosh darn it, I don't know how many times you have to say it, let's have customer service and be friendlier and get these things done. You might not be hearing it, but I certainly am, and I know others on this council are. Thank you. So I, I would appreciate also if those questions were answered, you know, just CC us all in, answer back, you know, former clerk Juno and, and CC us in. It don't seem that difficult. Thanks. Alder Scow. Yeah, I, I'm a little surprised at some of my colleagues. They seem to be awfully naive about this last election. There was a candidate who has refused to concede defeat. There is a party, a significant portion of that party, that supports him. To assume that people are just honestly asking questions because they don't understand or they don't have concerns is naive, or partisan part of the ticket, either way. Who remembers Peter Berniger? No? He was fined $2,403 for his testimony to WIAC, the WEC. Do you know how they came up with that number? They fined him $1 for every frivolous allegation he made. And you don't think that's out there still? And our clerk is going to take time to take this barrage of stuff? No. She's got work to do. Point of order, Mr. Mayor. I, I believe the questions were regarding the August election. I I I'm not sure, you know, there's scandals going back a couple years, but the questions that were posed were regarding the most recent election and the most upcoming. So. You might want to delve back a few years, but the questions are pertinent to the most recent election. Are they pertinent to the most recent election? <clears throat> Thanks, Alder Weary. Alder Scannell? Yes. I, I, I think that the wave from the 2020 is still going. The candidate has still refused to concede defeat. The significant portion of his party is still saying the elections are all screwed up. The elections are all, it was stolen. And it's been that since with every election. So, no, I, I, that's when it started, is what I'm talking about. It hasn't stopped. Thank you. Thanks, Alder Scannell. Any other comments or questions? Alder Galvin, then Alder Grant. Thank you, Your Honor. This is uh, for Attorney Bungert. Um, when, when you give us that report on the, I think you said 40 or 34 requests? 30, yeah, we have a running um, list, a spreadsheet basically to kind of keep track of what records requests are pending, which ones we still need information on. So I already emailed staff to be able to reconvene on this tomorrow morning to provide basically a sure. list of all of our pending requests. When, when you give us that list of pending requests, is mm -hmm. it possible to give us um, 
how many pages the city has had to produce for what they've been able to do so far for this for this particular year for 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 these requests these these last uh, 34 requests that you're talking about so so the 40 requests we have or 34 requests that we currently have pending um, I don't because they're pending, I won't have a determination of right. what a page number would be. Sure, if you could give us whatever you can, I guess. So we have a scope. I mean, uh, sure. I mean, with the last uh, um, issues that we had with the last election, I think it was what, well over twenty thousand pages. Yeah, approximately twenty-one thousand. And and I and I am concerned. I mean, I, I do think questions should be answered that the mm -hmm. public has um, as to you know ADA uh, accessibility and things that uh, that the law covers. But I am concerned after hearing numerous reports in the media about uh, concerted efforts to bury clerk's offices throughout the United States in frivolous requests to try and stymie them from doing their job. And I'm not sure to what end that is, and I'm not sure if that's what's happening here. Mm -hmm. But that is a concern that someone would, or some people or some organizations, would try to shut down the election process by overwhelming our clerk's office with unnecessary and frivolous requests. And so that's a concern I have. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Grant. I just, I want to make sure these questions are answered because some of these things are, if people are interested in observing, things that they need to know. If they do have a disability, they need to know that they're going to have a seat to sit down in. So I don't think this is all about 2020, Mr. Scannell. <laughs> this is so that people can prepare for the day and be actively involved in our elections, and I think that's great. So I don't want to shut anybody out from doing that. So I do think it's important that these get answered prior to that. All right, thanks, Alder. Any other questions from council? Alder Johnson. Yeah, uh, thank you, Clerk Jeffries, for uh, putting together that presentation for protection policy. Um, I did learn a few things uh, when I watched it, so I appreciate the time that you took to do that. Um, you know, interestingly, um, I, I, I've heard what some folks have said, in particular Alder Weary, and I agree with you. I've also heard what Alder Scandal said, and I agree with you. And so I, I go back to uh, an interview I actually recently did with NPR, and one of the things I talked about was that you have sort of fringe factions uh, within our community, one that says the election was stolen, one that says that everything was perfect, and the reality is they're both wrong. So I think it's, it's fair uh, to maybe um, characterize myself as a little bit of a referee here and say uh, at the local level, um, it's unnecessary to provoke, uh, but it's also unnecessary to be inflammatory. And, and I think um, at the heart of what we're talking about right now, the amount of time that we spent right now talking about this, uh, an email could have been replied to and said, here's your answers. Now, if there's a legal standard, of course, why we're trying not to do this, that's one thing. But if somebody's filing a, a Freedom of Information Act, um, I mean, we're, we're obligated by law to respond to that. And so that's going to happen. And I appreciate the point that Alder Galvin made, which is some cities that's happening. And, and I think uh, Attorney Bunger has certainly replied to where the city's at with doing that. But um, I think at the end of the day, let's just get the information out there because I, I, I do think that the more we communicate with the public, the more we can kind of diffuse some of these conversations, the more trust we can restore. Um, well, at the same time, not being afraid at this level, at the policy level, to say, hey, you know what, we're going to take steps to do that, but let's stop characterizing this as, as maybe a crisis that, that isn't there. And that, you know what, we recognize we made some mistakes perhaps in the last election, and we're going to try to correct it. And the way we're going to start doing that is by answering some of these questions and being receptive to feedback that says we're going to address policies as needed to make sure that we are in 100% compliance with the law. Uh, and I think at the end of the day, that's what we all want. But I think sometimes we get swept up in these narratives about that last election. But if we can stay focused on August and November, which is what's before us right now, and just be very honest with all of ourselves and say, there's no sense in provoking. There's no sense in being inflammatory. We, we, have, we all have a job to do here. And I, and I think we can do it very efficiently without maybe hiding behind what ifs. Thanks, Alder. All right, if there aren't any other questions, this is an informational item, so no motion is in order here, and we'll move along to resolutions. Motion to suspend the rules. Motion to suspend the rules and take up these items with one roll call vote. That was made by Alder Scannell and seconded by Alder Weary. All in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed nay. The ayes have it. The rules are suspended.
Motion to adopt. So made approved. Motion to approve. Made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Stoyer. Discussion? Seeing none, we'll use the board. Thank you. You may vote. Alder Stevens, can you vote verbally? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Alder. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hold that up. There we go. Hello. Okay. <laughs> is, is that Alder Stevens? Yes. Yeah. Yep. We, we can hear you. Uh, and those are approved unanimously. Yes. On to ordinances first and final reading for adoption. Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt made by Alder Scan. Oh, are we, we have to motion suspend to suspend the rules. Entertain a motion to suspend the rules. Oh. First and final. final. Yep. Motion has been made to suspend the rules and adopt this uh, ordinance with one reading. That was made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Eck. All in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Aye. The ayes have it and the rules are suspended. Motion to adopt, made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Eck. Discussion? We'll use the board. Thank you. You may vote. And Alder Stevens. Alder Stevens? Alder Stevens? Yes. Thank you. Six minutes. Okay. No. Go ahead. And that is adopted <coughs> unanimously. Uh, petitions and communications. Alder Stoyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Alder Scannell. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, to finance, uh, to discuss with possible action the purchase of an app that predicts, <coughs> predicts the blockage of bridges and downtown train crossings. Next one is to Transportation, Bicycle, and Pedestrian Committee to discuss with possible action the numerous bike and pedestrian crossings with respect to trails. This would include accident and traffic data as well as the possibility of installing flashing yellow signals at critical locations. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any others? Entertain a motion to refer. Alder Burnett makes a motion second. to refer these items to the appropriate committees. That was seconded by Alder Johnson. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Nay. Aye. <laughs> the ayes have it. Adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Motion second. to adjourn made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Burnett. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. We're adjourned. Thanks, everyone.